So today we have a dumpster television to explore. Let's see what's inside of it and how does it work and also if I can fix it. Not that I need it. The last time I watched the television was when a television still looked like a television. And not that it's any use without the remote control, but let's try it. It's made by LG. It says some type number and flatron or whatever buzzword. Digital TV monitor, DVB-T, HDMI, Dolby, whatever this is, this is, this is, this is, this is. And let's take a look at the other side of it. The main thing and a lot of other connectors, including SCART connectors and some composite and component video, VGA. At least I could use it as a monitor. It's a bit smashed. There are some buttons falling apart. Let's actually open it. Nice. Not sure it's fitting into the view, but Anyway, it's probably not. Here's the panel. This came off of something. How this was even connected to anything. The speakers here. Well, I guess this connector actually plugged into this somehow. Let's unscrew this and we will try to power it actually. This went here. Here's the remote control receiver with nothing to receive now. But at least these buttons I can try to turn it on. Let's just plug the disaster in. Of course now it's absolutely vital to have a fire extinguisher ready and plugging it in. Does it do anything? Well, a blue LED at least. I really miss the days of red, yellow and orange LEDs, but anyway, you really have to suffer if you sleep in the same room with this. This button actually says power on it, not that it does anything. The LED sort of cycles and the brightness of it fluctuates. It might be something with the power supply. Or is it one of these stupid pulse width modulated brightness animations? Well... It actually does something! No signal! Nice! And here's some menu. It's made in May 2009. It seems like it might have been somebody's first digital LCD television. After his CRT analog television. This country transitioned to a digital television in about 2009 to 2011. Assembled in Poland. Maybe the label was put on it in Poland. The rest of it was probably put together in China. Let's try to connect some signal to it. Well, nice. I connected this camera to it as a signal source and it's displaying normally. It's working. And it's interesting how to these eight buttons only three wires go. And you have a resistor between each button. Each button is progressively connected via more and more resistance to the right. And it recognizes the buttons based on the resistance connected to them. I guess only the power button has its separate wire. And the blue is the common ground, I guess. Here's this board with the LED. Some jack for audio output. Not much else. Of course the speakers here. 8 ohms, 3 watts, maximum of 5 watts for such a tiny speaker. At one time this was actually a 5 watt speaker. Imagine that. 20 centimeters in diameter. I guess I should further open it. Nice. This thing seems to be on a couple cables. This is the video signal and I guess the CCFL tubes. This is probably too early for LEDs. It might be a better idea to turn it off, of course. Can unplug the tubes and... And we can see the power supply board and the signal and processor board. You can probably also unplug this. And then the screen is completely separated from it. You can take a peek inside of this. Let's remove this cover. And here's a small board under it. There are basically just some resistors and capacitors on it here. And some chips, a voltage regulator, inductor, some capacitors, transistors. And basically the signal goes in here. Via these chips and it goes into the actual LCD panel. LG display, this chip. Fluorescent lamp in LCM, liquid crystal module panel, contains a small amount of mercury. Scary. Please follow local ordinances with no space of regulations for disposal. And of course, I'm not further opening it because I might actually use it for something. But there is actually not much to see in it anyway. There's the LCD panel and the backlight. 
Let's just show something similar from a monitor for demonstration. There are two pairs of cold cathode fluorescent lamps or tubes, very thin ones. One pair is on top, one at the bottom. There is some plexiglass light spreader and a white background and a Fresnel foil. And this basically creates a uniform white light illuminated background for the LCD panel, which doesn't produce its own light. It just changes how much light it passes. Now let's closer explore the board, isn't it? Lead free soldering. It surprisingly didn't fall apart in 15 years. I guess everybody's mostly interested in the power supply. Let's take the board out. I took four screws from the corners and let's take a look at it. And here's the power supply. And let's take a closer look at it. The mains comes in here. There is a fuse, some inrush limiting MTC thermistor, a class X2 interference capacitor life to neutral, it's a discharging resistor, maybe some metal oxide varistor for over voltage protection, this common mode double inductor interference filter, another X capacitor, here's the bridge rectifier, some Y capacitors, life to ground and neutral to ground, and even some discharging resistor, 10 mega ohms for this capacitor, nice. After the bridge rectifier, two probably parallel smoothing capacitors, 450 volts, 120 micro each. Then it's probably a flyback switching power supply with one transistor, the switching transformer. There's no power factor correction, which is not or at least wasn't required for this amount of power. Just a couple diodes, some resistor. I guess this is the current sensing resistor, 0 0.36 ohms, low resistance, some auxiliary capacitors. Some optocoupler, another Y capacitor here, maybe here. The switching transformer and the output capacitors and the output. And some inductors. Every output probably has a capacitor, an inductor and another capacitor. Or a group of capacitors, an inductor and a capacitor for each output. And here's the CCFL part of it. Some switching transistors. Switching the primaries of the transformers, high voltage transformers. In this case each CCFL tube has its own transformer. In some cases there was a transformer for each pair. And these high voltage capacitors are limiting the current. Or I guess some of these might be resonant capacitors parallel to the secondary. And the other ones might be in series with the lumps limiting the current. And what the hell is? Is there a beetle? Did this guy actually get the rectified mains? Nice! This is 325 volts. You're better off not touching this. Okay, so the beetle is disordered and now let's take a look at the other side of the board. In the power supply section there are some SMD capacitors, transistors, resistors and here's the control chip. A few more SMD components, some zeners and the detail of it. And now the CCFL section of it. Here's the control chip of it. And the MOSFETs in it. The chip basically drives the gates of them. It's a bridge driving all the primaries in parallel with these six capacitors in series. And the secondaries via capacitors go into the lumps and big distances between the traces for the high voltage. And of course the simplified schematic. The CCFL inverter is powered from the 15 volts, one of the rails of the switching power supply, two extra capacitors on the rail and a bridge of the MOSFETs. It's actually using two N-channel MOSFETs and two P-channel MOSFETs. Using P-channel MOSFETs at the top avoids using a floating gate drive. But you can only use this technique in a low voltage circuit, where the supply voltage is the same as the gate driving voltage. A higher voltage bridge would be typically made of just N-channel MOSFETs and the upper ones would have a floating gate drive. The output of the bridge goes via these capacitors, DC decoupling and all the parallel primaries of the high voltage transformers and the secondaries one end of each is connected to the zero volt rail and the other one goes always into a capacitive divider. I guess this is for a resonance but also some voltage sensing. And the upper capacitor has a much lower capacitance so it has most of the voltage on it. The lower one is a higher capacitance and has just a small fraction of the voltage on it and it's sensed via here. This is I guess sensing the voltage and if any of the lumps goes open a circuit doesn't ignite. The secondary voltage is higher and some circuitry here senses it and shuts it down. And each secondary also goes via a capacitor, 470 picofarads, into a lamp and from this lamp it goes via some current sensing circuitry and again to the zero volt rail. And here's the list of the outputs, 15 volts, 3.5 amps, 5 volts, 2.5 amps and 846 to 1034 volts RMS, 6 to 8 milliamps RMS for outputs. And caution high voltage of course. And in the voltage feedback there is a 2 and a 2, 2, 2, 2 transistor probably, a TL431 voltage reference and even a tiny thyristor. 
It's probably a crowbar protection. Shutting it down if there is an over voltage at the output. If the feedback fails, I guess. And the marking on this connector. Now the other board for screws in the corners, but also two screws here. The chassis comes out of the plastic box. And the board comes out. The power supply goes in here. A lot of electrolytic capacitors, some transistors or voltage regulators. Chips. The processor with the heat sink here. This goes to the panel. Some card slot here. A crystal. Some optical input. A lot of connectors here. The connection to the speaker. The connectors to the buttons and the remote control receiver here. And the antenna connector with the tuner here. Not much of it on the other side. Five chips and then discrete components. Here's the mainest connector, the ground wire end, one more beetle and that's it. Let's put it back together and let's hope it will work without the two beetles. The only problem with this one is these buttons which are falling apart. Maybe this is the reason they trashed it actually. I guess they lost the remote control or smashed it. Or spilled the drinks into it or vomited into it. And then they were using the buttons until they fell apart. I also wonder how the hell the speakers were mounted in it. There's nothing to mount them. They have holes for screws but where they actually should go. These buttons were a horribly flimsy design from the beginning. Well, the speakers are probably supposed to be on this. I still suffer from the naive expectation that when I see a hole, there is a screw supposed to go in it. These buttons sort of ruin it. They were on some super thin pieces of plastic, so thin they were flexible. But of course these all broke and the buttons are probably going to fall out of it. These eight buttons were made as one piece of plastic originally. It's not even the electronics that fail first. It's always some plastic bits which are replacing screws or when you're using the flexibility of a thin plastic. And also typically the plastic bits supporting the board with buttons behind it actually break. Is it because it's so flimsy or is it that people are gorillas? I don't know. Here's the power button which probably gets pressed the most and these plastic supports behind it just came off. Now the board just falls into it. This one definitely belongs back to the dumpster, but let's try to somehow botch it back in. I've super glued some random bit of plastic behind it to support it. Using this half dried super glue, this thing's really not worth opening a new one for it. I guess if this plastic pin on the button wasn't so thin, it wouldn't misalign with the micro switch like this. Nice. This is the plastic button on some super thin flimsy pieces of plastic. But of course this is just falling off now. That's just absolutely horrible. I'm giving up with the buttons. I ended up taping the bare board with the switches to the outside of it. This is an absolute ghetto desperation repair, but this is only going to be used as a guinea pig to test something. It has a lot of inputs, some of them more modern televisions don't even have. That's it, I can turn it off and back on. I can switch the inputs. Here is the menu, the volume. And that's it. But if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting this channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.